Hey everyone, welcome to the pre-Worlds uh, episode of the Guile Treatment. Uh, we're here with our uh, contest winners, uh, everybody that made the top uh, five and wanted to come on. <laughs> yep, <laughs> the three who showed up. Well, I think Shane yeah, wanted yeah. to come on, he just had, he couldn't make it because he has to work, I believe. Oh, right, so. okay. He, he didn't sport. bring that up until today. That's fine. Anyway. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I guess the news of the day is obviously that there have been some bans. So uh, if you were planning on playing Maxi or Punishment Time in your world's deck, uh, find Get a new deck. Too bad. Super Worry easy about it. it. Super easy uh, to find a new deck. I mean, I guess I guess to keep it brief, we could uh, if we want to each give our opinion on the bans in five words or less. Uh, I can start. I can say I'd say it was it's disappointing but unsurprising. That was like six, dude. It's yeah. disappointing, disappointing, but unsurprising. But unsurprising? It's three yeah. words. Okay, whatever. whatever. <laughs> you you counted the syllables. He you counted the syllables. Every single week. Yeah. yeah, Chris Smith counted the syllables. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. It counts. My show, it counts. Uh, I'll keep it simple. Uh, Legendary Wolf Games hat on store owner. I don't give a shit. Miles Tyler, the UFS player. I don't give a shit. Yeah, <laughs> I I really don't care. There we go. I really don't care. Four words. Oh, nice, Dave. It's fine. <laughs> fine. <laughs> like fires around him. Rest, it's fine. The rest of the Wolfman community is in flames. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> so, 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 Church, if you're keeping track, what you need to do now is just have a one word answer. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. There it was, Church. Your one shot. Uh, oh my God! Important updates are pending. Uh oh. Oh, <laughs> not now is the t- <laughs> the newest Windows feature is ready to install. The newest, the newest Windows feature is we're gonna kick you off this Skype call. Oh, that's sad. Chris, yes. you have an opinion? No. Oh, no. Gone. Okay. Cool. Moving on. Moving on. Uh, so I guess. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> That's all right. What a face. He'll come what back. Face. He'll come um, back. So I guess. I mean, I. Uh, what time are you guys all? Are, is anyone getting there early? I know Chris is getting there like eight years early. I'm getting there on Monday. Oh, uh, you're talking about yeah. like two, two Vegas? Yeah, for, yeah two oh, Vegas. Yeah. yeah, we'll start I'm, with that. I'm getting there on Wednesday. Cool. Uh, okay. Like somewhere in the middle of the day. I forget exactly when my flight is, but yeah. I'm I'm staying from like Wednesday till the following Tuesday, so that'll be fun. Making a whole week of it, cool. Yeah, pretty much. So I will be there uh, Thursday morning, and we're going to see Endgame. Um, and then I'll be there. Danny, me, Danny, and Kyrie, and most of Omaha will be there from Thursday until Monday, and then I will probably be staying in Vegas to do some stuff with Jasco and go to California to do some distribution level stuff for LWG and then I'll be back in Omaha that mm-hmm. that right before that weekend. So right. there you go. Oh look, he's back already. Look, he's back. <laughs> uh church gets the church. warned me. Church. Gotcha. Church, when do you get Can to I Vegas? Get my one word back? <laughs> it's far <laughs> too late for that. It's yeah. too late. We, we moved on. A strangling motion, but so we uh, we're gone. talking about when we're getting to Vegas. When are you getting to Vegas and leaving? And all that fun stuff. When am I getting to Vegas? Yeah. Let's see. What today? As of now, just let me know what days I should rob your house. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah there you go. Today recording is Tuesday the sixteenth. I'm leaving in thirty six hours. Oh. Yeah. He's he he's been he's been <laughs> a long time. Are you, on your hands, are you church? <laughs> I'm not are, doing that this time. Don't are you before. are you walking to Vegas? Like what's nope. what's going on? No, nope, I'm leaving. Uh, my plane leaves set. 7 a.m. on Thursday, I get there at about noon. Okay. Um, stand at the Excalibur until I meet up with Chris on Monday. Yeah. Nice. And yeah, when are you leaving? Awesome. Uh, like, so, I, I was supposed to leave Monday morning after the event. <laughs> supposed to. <laughs> then some idiot that booked his own plane tickets, not naming any names. Instead of putting down 11 p.m., he put, or sorry, instead of 11 a.m., he put down 11 p.m., so I'm getting back on the Tuesday after. <laughs> Okay, this vacation just got a bit longer. All right. Godspeed, sir. Yeah. And I'm so I basically, I have to get my world's decks ready tomorrow. Yeah. 
That's not that. At least they, at least they ban Maxi <laughs> today and not and tomorrow. The <laughs> yeah. um, I'm already in the city, ready to go. I would just walk up to Jasco and cry. Like, really? oh, my God. <laughs> so it's at the Level Up uh, Expo at the Convention yep. Center. Uh, where it was last year for those who made it, for those who are coming for the first time, uh, Google it, I guess. Uh, yeah. I guess it's... I guess the important thing, too, I've seen this asked again, you don't need to get a pass for the tournament. Yeah. Um, you know, like no badge. Either the day before or the day of, like early, they'll have some information up about like what entrance to go in. And you basically show up with your UFS deck to the entrance that they specify. There will be someone there who's like, checking your stuff <clears throat> and you basically go hey i'm here to play in like the jasco event you know here's my deck and the guy will like leaf through it and give you a badge and you'll be able to get in and out for free for like the duration of the event and, uh, cool. when i went there last time at least jason and a couple of jasco guys were up front to make it quicker they would see a few people they know like hey they know church here's your badge they know garrett here's your badge and people would be able to get through a bit quicker mm -hmm. yep it's really, really easy. So anybody that's traveling for the first time, just find somebody like us or somebody that you know in the community and skip your way to the entrance and they'll get you square away. Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. I mean, last year, at least in the beginning of it, we had like our own side entrance that we went mm -hmm. That was very nice. And we had our own room last year, too, much better yeah. than 2017. Oh, my God. Oh, so I'm looking forward to that. Oh. Yeah, 2017 yeah, was terrible, but yeah. last, last, last year was good. Yeah. No wrestling noises this no year. No wrestling noises. Kind of disappointing. Yeah. Wrestling. It was that fucking yeah, the terrible chip 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 You just hear thump thump. <laughs> yeah. That was hype. That was fun. I got, I got to tell you, I would have dealt with all of the wrestling noises if I never had to hear those chip tunes. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I got like, I was like down at those tables, like right next to him playing against Ein in the third round. He was playing Cutman. I was playing with Zoe and like, this thing is just blaring. I'm like, we're sitting like across the table, could not hear each other, had no idea. Like, <laughs> we're just there, like, just grinding our teeth. Like, why? Like, can this stop? <laughs> yeah. Can, I have no stop? idea how they did commentary during that. No. Yeah. It was bad. So anyway, after, so we, we, but they won't be doing that. They should. Yeah. We should not. Yeah. We should have yeah. our own room again this uh, year. Last year soon. they had. We were upstairs. Uh, we went up the escalator, down a little bit of a hallway. We were in the bigger room. Actually, it was right very after. Nice yeah, it was yeah. really really nice venue hall. Uh, they'll have all your deck lists there, so you can write all your deck lists. Uh, they'll probably if, if they haven't given us badges at the at the front, they'll give us badges upstairs because last year we didn't. You we weren't walking through the con. You went into the air, into the building, and up the stairs. So they'll probably yeah. We kind of edges. avoided the con, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. You don't have like we didn't have to walk through the dealer hall or anything. Correct. So. We didn't have to walk through the dealer hall. So um, hopefully, hopefully, like last year, they have the full size tables because they tried to put us on those little half size oh, tables. Oh, I remember oh, that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was yeah, really bad. Right. <laughs> they wanted us to play teams on this like picnic oh, bench. It was yeah. bad. Yeah. <laughs> You could not fit two play mats on that. You could barely fit one. Yeah. No, it was really bad. Yeah. yeah, but like we're we're kind of shit, shitting on it a little bit, but by and large, no, no, it was it was last fantastic. year went pretty. Smooth. No, it was it was yeah. it was the it, was I think really that was the, the was that the yeah. start of like their smoothest run ever of like tournaments so, ran, yeah. I believe. Probably like, last year was that, ran really well, and <laughs> that was kind of like the beginning of it. Was that John was 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 Worlds when like we I don't I think we had. One repair, but that was due to Broberg and Barrett writing down the wrong thing or something like they circled the wrong thing. So it wasn't I even. I was so, so excited during that. I had yeah. to sit down in front of Garrett, and then the repair started happening, and I breathed a sigh of relief. The repair went up to the table beside me, and it stopped. <laughs> I was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, so you know, with the with the new set, I'm kind of can get into some meta talk right now. Uh, with the new yeah. set dropping only like what three weeks ago at time of recording, right? Three, basically two, yeah, two and a half, like two ish, about two ish. April fifth, today is the sixteenth, so eleven days. Eleven days. Well, yeah, last, last weekend was Rochester. Oh, that's and right. It was like it yeah. came out that day. Okay, so, so yeah. Yeah. how much of a how much? I guess the terminology I'm looking for does does it bear a lot of weight on the format with this new set? Do like. We've obviously known about these cards for months, so have yeah, you, you should have good. some sort of knowledge of at least what the cards do. Maybe not like the interactions, because I don't know how many people actually printed out proxies to test with. Um, but 
Uh, Miles, I know I see you shaking your head. Do you I, think I, the new set weighs a lot on the new format? Do you think it's, you know, I guess what I'm trying to say is, does it change so the meta can, completely or whatever? I, I'll, I'll check hey, it on that. Hey. Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, <laughs> you calm the fuck down, sir. I calm the fuck down. You, you hold have that to... tongue. I, I got to ask the question, I'm going to answer it. I'm going to put some more rum in my mouth and I'll shut it. Like, that's fine. So. Fine. Thank you, sir. Much um, <laughs> um, I, I don't. God, see, I'm so simple about this. It's fucking UFS, guys. Like, just. Just play games. Like, you're going to sit down, and we're going to do the same thing we do every week, but you're not going to die on turn one as of today. So, you know, <laughs> unless something really stupid happens or somebody on this show right now knows something that they're not talking about, nobody should be dying on turn one. It's a turn It's a turn two to five meta, and the rest of the characters in Soul Calibur support that. I don't think that that changed much. Maxi's colon was the reason why, and... Like I said, we're not talking about that anymore. So, I mean, there are still really strong characters. Cassandra is still great. Uh, Zhang Hua is still great. Yeah, uh, I don't know Cassandra in this game, but I know what you mean. Or, yeah, uh, so, Wait, yeah. Did you mean Cassie Cage or Sophie? I actually. I meant Sophie. But okay, yes. I actually. Sophie. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, so, yeah. Really good. Yeah. Cassie's still got Maxi shit, so she's going to be a problem. I mean, not a whole lot is changing, it's just the landscape again. And if. You sit down with the deck that you built, and you show up to the tournament and do what the hell you're just you you meant to set out to do in the first place. Yeah. There's not really a much. There shouldn't be a change. You just play in UFS. So, I mean, like I said, the biggest thing that I think everybody should have been concerned about was dying before you got a chance to play UFS. So that's why I don't give a shit about the ban because I w- I want to play a game with you. I want to kill you on turn two. So. I signed up for that. I signed up to get rid of 70 cards in my deck and kill you on two. And if I don't, then you won. So, like, yeah. great. I didn't sign up to lose before I get to play any cards. Sounds good. Dave? <laughs> hey, you got to build, like, three on turn one, okay? <laughs> so, like, yeah, like, very similar mindset to Miles here. Like, the 5,000-foot view here is, like, are any of the new characters in the format doing something drastically different than anybody coming before them, right? That you have to make adjustments for. And the only one that really like breaks fundamental UFS at this point is Shanghua. Yeah. Right. And there's ways to approach her that are easier than trying to deal with like getting blitz turn one by maxi and, and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. uh, all of the other characters, like there's a bunch of really good characters there. Right. But they're not, like rewriting how you play the game on a like fundamental deep basis level. Yeah. 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 So if if you if you had a deck that you felt good about in MK, like say you're a Jackie Briggs player, right? And then yeah, maybe you update it with some new stuff and it's probably still gonna be fine. So um update with new stuff, maybe some foundations. Yeah, foundations, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah, you get those new sweet tech attacks from sixteen hundreds France. Wait, yes, like exactly. Quest for the Hero the Sword can get what? Quick Burst and what? Uh, what's what's her other one? Single Barrel. So like you could, you know, sure. if you. Can, do, I mean, that's, that's is probably a bad example. But oh, I know, but I'm just yeah. I'm just shooting out an example. I'm just you know me. I just shoot yeah. from the hip. I have really yeah, no. Yeah. You know, no, I'm saying me yeah. saying Jackie Briggs was maybe a bad example. Oh, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, fair enough. Well, like Spike, no, like like still, like Spike still, One, like little tweaks like you can make yeah. and stuff like that. But as far as like drastically changing the game, like. Shanghua's really the only one that does something that is very unique and out of the Correct. normal UFS box out of the yeah. set. So yeah, um, yeah. Sure. I think it's I think it's fine. Sure. Like, yeah. Like there's still the obligatory meta shakeups a bit. Like Tacky's not going to shake anything, but you need to consider that for your matchup. She's going to beat your Cassie player probably. Mm-hmm. I mean, at least the matchup's a bit more in her favor than most matchups for Cassie. Little things like that. Nightmare should be much of an issue unless you got a deck that's built on blocking everything. Then you're an idiot. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just mainly knowing what's in the set. If you haven't played with it, that's kind of fine. Just read the cards and understand what's in it so you're not going in blind and mm-hmm. wondering, what the hell is Tacky doing? What, what do you mean my card pool's clearing? I was about to combo you, you know? Don't be an idiot. There, and there's not much that you can do about it. I mean, like, you're going to sit down and you're just going to play UFS. You're going to draw your hand. You're yeah. going to decide if it's a mulligan. You're going to get your next hand, and you're going to play the game. So, like, don't worry about it. Like, practice yeah. 
be ready, be mindful, RTFC every card that you can read before you get there. But like at the end of the day, just show up and play UFS. And hey, if it's teams and your opponent's playing a Soul Calibur deck, you know, you try and just go around that. Get your teams to fight that. Yeah. <laughs> Rob? Your uh, you're directly at people. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> just assume that they're better at the game than you. All That's what I always assume. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess, like, my thing about having the set, like, out this recently and um, really just having the two events. And the thing is, too, is, like, the two events, not only is it just two but it's also, like, as we just said, like, the set's, like, 11 days old. Yeah. So, like, you know, these are definitely not, I mean, maybe that maxi deck was, like, one of the better versions of that build you could have had by now. Yeah. But, like, you know, you, like, you can kind of assume that, like, whatever your local, like, Taki player or, you know, Zhanghua player or Yoshimitsu player or whatever, it's, like, whatever they're playing, like, probably isn't the optimal version of that deck um the obviously like getting the matchup practice is still good because it's gonna Mm -hmm. like clue you in on some of the play lines like some of like what it does well what it doesn't do well like it'll still help but um i think this is like kind of a format that's really going to be like good for people that um like just grind a lot of games and you know have a lot have good fundamentals and can kind of like adjust well on the fly because like you're gonna see decks at worlds that like you've never seen before or like yeah. you know play things that you've never seen before and like you know it all boils down to like the same stuff but um you know you're definitely gonna be rewarded for I mean honestly even just like knowing your deck well like you know you don't want to go in um just kind of like Blind. yeah like play like it, play something yeah. that you know well yeah uh, pick something pick yeah. a direction like yeah. you either you either show up to the event prepped like to play against what you think is going to show up which a lot of us seasoned players have done or you show up to the event with the deck that you have theory crafted and you just say fuck it, i'm going for broke yeah that's what yeah. that's what happened with vicious and me with earth last year i just yeah. didn't give a shit about anything else I was like, I have Vicious, he's under Earth, everybody's playing Mexican Typhoon because they're afraid of Spike, fuck that. So I showed up with my game plan, which is just to play my deck the best way that I knew how. Mm-hmm. Where playing Terry in the past, I was so focused on the meta that my deck was built to counter what was being played at the time instead of just playing good UFS. So like, that's a really good way of showing a mindset change in how you can play the game. Those of you that are traveling and this is your first time, just again, I keep saying this, but just play UFS. Like, yeah. And you're going to learn a lot and you'll be able to make these adjustments that, you know, a lot of seasoned UFS and veteran UFS players make at big tournaments that make top 16 every year. I think that's something too is like, I think if you, if you feel that you have a really good build of one of the Soul Calibur characters, like, go for it because you're going to definitely get into matchups where like people aren't don't have like the matchup now like if 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 you're going in with the soul caliber character and you're playing against like a relatively well-known like mortal Kombat character or bebop character or something like that like you already have a bit of an advantage because like you've like you know you've seen this sort of deck before and like they may not have seen your time in deck before Mm -hmm. Um, so like I think it's just one of those things, like, there, it's sort of so, like, the meta is so underexplored that, you know, there's definitely a possibility, we, we're like, you know, we can see some, like, wild stuff, like, coming out of here. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't have thought that we would have seen decks as wild as the Zhonghua in Rochester and the Maxi in um, Arkansas already. Yeah. And I think that that is sort of a testament, well, I mean... I don't think Kevin really even worked on that that much because he was prepping for like turbo and whatnot. So I think that's a little bit of a testament to like Kevin being nuts and, you know, like running some theory craft with like Dave and some other people. Uh, and then like the maxi deck, like, I don't know how long Jacob had been like working on that, but you know, he definitely is sort of a like high roll savant of like these <laughs> just bananas decks. Yeah. So, yeah. I've heard the Tim term a uh, little kid luck. Little kid <laughs> luck. That's true. That's that's gonna change soon. When he turns twenty one, he knows this. He has to cash in by hand. 
as somebody that sat at LWG and like we helped him with the deck and gave ideas and play tested against it, it was like a. Uh, I wasn't going to play this. And I think you guys interviewed him earlier yeah. this week or something. Yeah, yesterday. Where, yeah. And, yeah, he probably told you. I He wasn't going to play it. He was going to play something else. And then we were sitting at the store and it was like, Jake, wh- why wouldn't you play this? Like, <laughs> like this is such a jake-ass. two weeks. <laughs> yeah, this is such a jake-ass deck. Like, you just killed me on turn one and I had answers and I still died. So, yep. no. Stop! Yeah. Stop dicking around. Go, go Otherwise, we're gonna. Ticket. Yeah, go, go get your plane go. ticket. Otherwise, we're gonna have maxi dot format like we did with with uh, um, yeah. Liu Kang and Zoe. Liu Kang. Liu Kang. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I guess that's something that's interesting too. Is like, I like. I don't think. I think with the Quan Chi ban, they left Liu Kang, and so there was still sort of this like. 800 pound gorilla in the room like yeah with maxi being gone like what is it like akuma maybe yeah but even then like i I think it's (laughs) i don't think i don't know well i don't know that he is as good as like Liu kang was like in that sort of like like he 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 is is. (laughs) i I mean i definitely think there's at least like i mean i think if someone's playing taki like they feel really good about that you know if you think there's gonna be a million akumas play taki yeah. You know, play like something like that. Like, okay, sure. Yeah. And yeah, like, in the last year, I've absolutely become a proponent of just play what you want to damn well play. Too many times I've stressed over tier lists or just staring about what does this do to the meta? What does that do? Just play the damn deck you spent three months making. It's probably your love child at this point. Just, mm-hmm. just play it. I don't care if three other people have builds of the deck. You know what? Yours is different than theirs. Become your own damn person. So I will counterpoint that. So, <laughs> so we can. No, no, that's good because you're yeah, just absolutely right for a particular type of player, right? It, yeah. So with with a big event like Worlds or Nationals or like UK Nats or what have you, like it depends on what your goal is, right? Yeah, yeah. If, yeah. if if your goal is to win the entire tournament, then you you spike it up. You research the meta. You figure out like what's yeah, your best don't approach. Ignore to the tier list. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's that's not what I'm getting at. It's it's more like if if you have chosen like this is the most powerful deck in the format. Like say it was Liu Kang last last major, right? Mm-hmm. And you say, okay, I'm just going to execute Liu Kang as well as I can, and I'm going to tackle the meta that way, and I'm going to try to beat my di- diversity fight because I think I'm good enough to do it. Right? Then that's a perfectly valid approach too. Right. Again, it, it depends on what your goal is, right? Like me as a player who's been in this game for forever, a lot of times, especially for singles, I just want to have fun. Right. Mm-hmm. So maybe I'll play something that I consider like maybe not the top, top tier of the format. Maybe it's somewhere in like, you know, A minus A tier, but I put my own spin on it or what have you, and I'll have a good time doing that. But like Teams is a different beast. Teams, I'll I'll cut throat the shit out of teams. That's totally different. I actually, oh, yeah, think, I actually think more players cut throat teams than they do singles to begin with. Actually, I, I don't yeah. think that's true. Yeah, I think, think so? you just have more people that come on podcasts and talk about. Teams. <laughs> is that maybe a better way of putting <laughs> it? Yeah, yeah, a lot of people do true. talk about teams and love it more, but that's yeah, the people yeah. that are on the podcast. Yeah, I guess because they're the friendlier bunch. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> team, teams offers a, an ability to do something that you can't do in singles, obviously, and that's just the basics of being able to win the day because you know how to pair matchups. Right. Be, right. That's the flavor. Right. Like you can't do that in singles. You got to sit down across the table and you got to outplay your opponent. Where teams, you win the dice roll and you go, "Oh, you're you're Goro. I'm playing vicious." I'm gonna flip all your stuff face down and you don't do anything. <laughs> this is an auto win. You you can't do that in singles. True. I mean, and another thing you can't do in singles, from what I understand, this last asset that Dave and Ben won, it was the first time Ben won a match in the finals. No, Ben didn't win his match in the finals. <laughs> oh, okay, then he continued to <laughs> no, no, I saw it. Yeah, JG beat the shit out of him. <laughs> Ben lost to Big Johnson in the finals. Yeah, then, sure did. Oh, yeah, he did. Sure did. <laughs> that, that streak is still alive. It's fine. <laughs> there we go. She put zero and X in the finals of cardboard and keep getting cardboard. He's got and that's them. pretty cool. <laughs> He's got four teams assets. Yeah. So, uh, 
Uh, yeah. Um, so no, I, I think I think both approaches are equally valid, right? But again, it totally depends on what your goal is. If if you want to try to win the whole thing and cutthroat it, then cutthroat it. Like play play what you think is the absolute best deck in the format. Practice the shit out of it. Even yeah. if it's I have three weeks to figure this out, but I think I've got something great here, then do that. Mm -hmm. Like if if you want to cool, I want to see if I can not sneak in a top sixteen with my pet deck. Great, do do that too. That's entirely up to you. But again, what yeah. You know, it's, it depends what? on what you're looking to do at that tournament. Speaking I, about, I mean, probably don't last minute peep the tier list and go, oh, cool. Yeah. So I oh, should I definitely like max. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I yeah. have 100%. Maybe that. if you're yeah. new. Yeah. yeah. Garrett has done that and has won with that. Yeah. I mean, obviously, he didn't look at a tier list because he's never going to admit that. But <laughs> <laughs> he sure did win cardboard with Skullman. So. Fucking shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> no, like what Dave was saying about the pet deck thing, you may get like, with diversity at a major, since there's like what Liu Kang had, what 11, 12 at Nats? We're not going to see that again. And there, there were no yeah, fucking Napalm yeah. Man and Top Cuts yeah. in the Bebop so, meta. Like, you may, you may, <laughs> you may sorry, get I in. Specify. Oh, you're fine. Napalm Man 2. Dot. But, yeah, like, you yeah. could sneak That's in not, that I'm way, not too. Whatsoever. I want. The, there's a guy from Reno, I don't remember his name, who was playing it, if I recall correctly, or Arizona, one of the two, somewhere where there's desert. Um, Miles, that man didn't have a sideboard. <laughs> <laughs> but, but hold on. As a, as a component of the people, I can't say what you just said. You can say it for me. I can't do that. So a name for man in my world making it in his hop cuts, there's some strange fucking voodoo magic. I mean, I, need, I can't say it. But there's a, a, a phrase from the boondocks where Ruckus walks into the house where they have have uh, Thomas Dubois tied to the bed. And if Shane was on the show, he can say it. I can't say it because I Cody can't thing. But there's some powerful <laughs> at work if, if Napalm Man is making top cuts in the Bebop Mortal Kombat meta. Yeah. yeah. You put yeah. whatever words you want in there. So Strange David X. Martin. Yeah. Strange X. Yeah. Strange no, like X. stuff like that does happen. Seven, though. 14 attacks. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff like that does happen, though, in at majors where, yeah. you know, you get this one-off or two-off. Like the Blanca that didn't play any Bebop cards at Worlds last year. He I got it. I fought that guy in round one. So, so here, here's, here's <laughs> the problem with that, right? It's yeah. like those decks will sneak in sometime but they won't, like they 18th, won't 19th, yeah. 20th, 21st yeah. seed yep. and then immediately get crushed. Oh, yeah, he immediately got crushed. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that guy had no dreams of making top 16, and then it became a reality. Yeah, because exactly. people yeah. started scooping in round five. It just happened. I yeah. think you're going to see less scooping this. Uh, slightly I less really scooping. Hope so, yeah. I mean, um, I feel like I've seen less since they introduced, like, the seeding. Um, seeding system. Like, yeah. there definitely are people that are going to play in, like, the last round when they would have ID'd before. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, uh, let's yeah. go on that. Do you think it's a? Yeah. Do you think that's been like a, a positive since we want to play more games? And do you think sure. it's going to make more of a like a bearing on worlds with people playing later round matches actually mean something? I am really torn on it personally. Like, I think I think the smarter thing to do if if I was the one writing the tournament rules, which thank God I'm not because I don't <laughs> want that responsibility. Uh, but if it was me, I would just start instituting a top two diversity cut and not worry about the seating. Um, yeah, sure. The problem with seeding is like that's like people can harp all they want and how like oh well the, look look at what the numbers have shown and like going first doesn't always like still a big fucking advantage yeah it is. like yeah. anybody who's been playing UFS for a, a like significant amount of time will tell you that there is a reason that every time you win a die roll you choose to go first yes every time every time. There is there is no reason not to do that. It is always an advantage, like, and the fact that if if you are a num the number one seed in a sixteen player top cuts, you have a drastic advantage over the rest. Of the yep. Yeah. Yes, you like, do. And I don't like that. I, I I understand why they did it from like from their mindset, but I don't agree with it. I, I um, would have been a way bigger fan of like, okay, screw that again, top two diversity. And that, that will honestly have more people playing through the way they won't scoop. Of top tables yeah. because they won't scoop. Mm -hmm. This, this doesn't stop scooping. This just benefits people who are maintaining a top table spot for the entire time. True. Yeah. Like it doesn't really stop people scooping at all. It doesn't make a difference. It just means you're probably going to play your round six, round seven. 
instead of just taking draws. But that doesn't really make that big of a difference. Sure. Right. So anyway, that's that's my two cents on that. I don't want to harp on it for too much longer, but I don't like it. So. <laughs> I, as somebody that got to take advantage of it and still lost as much as that sucks, because I went to Atlanta with Ken and won most of my dice rolls during the day. So, like, when I got to go first, it was like, oh, I get to do this all day because I'm top seed. And I'm one through four. I mean, losing sucked, but, like, being able to say that I have a deck that if I go first, I win the game and then I lose game two and then I win game three. <laughs> it's it's yeah. sexy as shit. Like, okay. I love it. <laughs> look at like look at Shane's run through the last PTC that we just had, right? Like Jetta getting to go first all the time with twelve cards or twelve attacks that D build on two. Yeah, that's a big advantage, man. Like that's huge. Mm -hmm. That's such a that's such a kick in the balls. Like, and not being able to contest that by being able to just win a die roll and cool, I get to go first against it. Like, no, it. it I I don't like it. I don't like it, but anyway. So, it, it, so it looks like where their hearts at on wanting to get people to play through the last few rounds. Yeah. That's fair. They yeah. went about it a little weirdly. I didn't expect it to go this way, but maybe it'll get changed after Worlds. I don't know. I mean, yeah. uh, dealing with IDs does suck, though. As the guy, yeah. as the hero of the people, to some degree, playing like characters that aren't S tier, like sitting, fighting my way, like losing round one, getting paid, like what was it? Getting paired into somebody god tier that you know you're most likely going to lose to because they can outplay you, and then fighting your way. Yeah, I mean that doesn't have very often, but whatever. <laughs> I'm getting up there. I'm not playing this game with you, Wagner. Oh, I'm just kidding. Um, so starting the day that way and then fighting your way back up the ladder for it to not matter because of all the diversity and then everybody upstairs just IDing and it not affecting them and then you being like right there on the bubble all the time. Yeah, so you would yeah, rather see yeah. those people play it out to get those L's. So you, since you fought for it, can get back up the ladder because mm -hmm. the draws aren't a bad thing. I mean, they're not a good thing. That's why they're draws. But like, yeah. it gives the people in the middle of the pack more reason to play the game. And you're right, Dave. To some degree, the people upstairs are like, "Well, I'm going to play this out." But if I'm here, I'm here for a reason. I'm playing the Earth Vicious that flips everything face down. So even if we play, I still have the advantage. You know what I mean? Like, what's the drawback? Something needed to be done about IDs because I felt like personally that I, it was a problem because... No, I, I, I agree with them doing something. I just, like I said, I just don't like this particular approach. Like, I, yeah. I do agree that something had to be done. Like, no argument with that whatsoever. Like, it was... So the, the other thing is, like, I've talked about this. I don't know if I've talked about this on the show before, but I know I've brought it up a number of times. Like the single diversity cut is a relic of when we did top eights for big yeah. events, right? Like, and that, and that was a thing since like 2006. Yeah. Uh, and I don't remember when we started doing top 16 cuts instead of top eights, but Pretty I sure know Jasko it, was, era it means, was during yeah. Jasko era at some point, which is the bulk of UFS's history at this point. Fair. Um, so like, I, you don't even need to delineate between the two anymore. But yeah, it was somewhere in here where we switched over to a top 16 cut, which is fine if that's what we want to do. But the diversity adjustment never happened. It sure right? did. So yeah. yeah. I mean, isn't that, just, isn't that a story for like ever? Guys, we're just going to introduce this until we can sort out like these characters that suck. Yeah, no, but we're not this, this is different. This is a fundamental tournament structure thing. This isn't yeah. like this character is OP and we need to nerf him. Like. This is something that you can fix with a rule change. You don't have to ban anything. Sure. So sure. yeah. And anyway. Thank you. Um, um, so yeah. let's uh so traditionally teams is always first. Uh, that's yeah. the whole mat matchup picking you to fight with your buddies for the honor and glory and victory of getting a cool asset card is now just an asset is no longer a foundation i found out someone told me mm -hmm. um it's only, yeah they used to say asset or foundation the last few events this one they said just, just asset, asset so which is interesting um but uh let's i guess it's i guess i don't know how deep we want to go into the teams type meta like like me personally i'm picking an anti i'm taking an anti-meta deck so yeah you know so there's that. Like you usually like to have two, maybe two world beaters, and this weird, we have, like the weird one off that we we've talked about on last year's show. Or you could mm -hmm. all go with like you. There's a the way you kind of want to mix up your team or whatever your team makeup is how you want to 
kind of say it, I guess. I'm trying to phrase yeah. a question and I'm failing at it. So No, no, no. I, I think you nailed it down. It's like there's there's plenty of ways to like approach teams, right? And and as somebody who's had a lot of success in there, like I, I know that the approach that works for like in this case it's me, Ben and Phil. Um but different teams approach things completely different ways. Like last year was a weird aberration because almost every team had a Liu Kang on it. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like that's not an exaggeration. Like almost every like team had a Liu Kang on it. it I think every team in top eight did at least every team in top eight. did. Yeah. I think yeah. there were, yeah. I think there were literally like three or four that didn't. It did. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But I don't, I don't I know. Yeah, 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 exactly. exactly. He was just yeah. that strong. So <laughs> yeah. I don't know if we're going to have that this year. Like, like well, is, and he didn't use cards that other people used. Like, yeah, yeah, he, that's that's a really good point, actually. Like, he was a very unique deck, and a lot of the a lot of his kit, like nobody else even remotely was looking at. So yeah. it, it was easy to build around him. Yeah. Um, the closest parallel you have to that this year is probably Akuma because he's kind of in that same position where, mm-hmm. like, n- like yeah, yeah, evil or whatever symbol you decide to build him off of. There's a lot of like strong generic pieces in there, but a lot of his kit is. Akuma stuff. Right. Sure. Like the yeah. biggest thing is you might be like fighting over the, face of the like, monsters. provokes. Face sure. of a monster yeah. and stuff like that. Maybe yeah. face of a monster. Face, faces I or, or whatever. I don't know if you're going to so. have face of a monster in all three decks. Like you're going to have yeah. something. You're not going to have a single like earth or good deck on your team. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I know. It's possible. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's possible. <laughs> yeah. So, so I don't, I don't think you're going to have that happen this year where you have like the Liu Kang equivalent on every single team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think the field's more broad um, than it was uh, at nationals last last year, sure. um, which is good. Uh, I think a lot of people are going going to go in with like, "Cool, I've got this Soul Calibur character deck, right?" Just kind of like we were talking about earlier mm-hmm. that I think I can catch people's pants down with because they haven't seen, you know, this particular flavor of it. Like, go to a, a PTC because we've only had what forty two players total in yeah. events in the last two weeks, <laughs> yeah. and that's all of our data going into, yeah, into exactly. like two weeks from now. Yeah, yeah there's some so, full caliber characters we just haven't seen at all. Sure, like if if I sit down against like Ivy, for example, right? Like I haven't tested against that character at all. Like yeah. I, I have a vague idea of what what she might want to be doing, but mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to adapt on the fly, right? And and that's. That, that can be a huge advantage. Like last year when we got our, yeah, at nationals, when I got our teams win, when we got our teams win, um, my sniper Joe deck, like a lot of people were just like, I have to pick this character up and look at, at him. I'm like, good, you're going <laughs> to yeah. lose. Fan- yeah. Fantastic. Like, um, and because maybe you built something that interacts on an axis that people just aren't anticipating. Right. And that's, yeah. especially in teams when you can pair that kind of deck, that's really powerful. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, actually, I guess that's good. Like, things. one character that you know you might consider for like teams that you wouldn't play for singles. I mean, the example that's been kicking around since MK is Goro, right? Yeah, yeah. like where if where you can run, <laughs> like whether it's like I mean, shotgun Goro, yeah. like Rodney's, or whatever flavor of Goro you like, whether it's like Rio style build or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> honestly, now you even have like weapons with like Guilty Throne. I mean, you sure. sit down and they say, I have Goro, and you're like, what Goro is it? <laughs> right. Yeah, there's right. probably at least four yeah. or five different yeah. builds it could possibly sure. be. That makes yeah. pairing weird. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so he's probably like the easiest <laughs> answer to that question, I guess. Yeah. Like, there's other stuff too, though. Uh, Vicious can, can be like, a bunch of different flavors. I'd say like Gil. Like Gil I seems guess. like somebody yeah. that like would be interesting for like teams perhaps, but like, you know, it's it's I guess that's more in the kind of like it's gonna be a character people might be like unfamiliar with. Like, yeah. I mean there have been a couple that popped up, but like I think it sort of seems like a weird one. But. Since the format can be so aggressive, I think characters like Siegfried can show up and nobody would know what to do. Because on paper, you read him, you read him and you go, oh, I'll, he, he reads bad. Oh, you flip a foundation and cancel this thing. But, yeah, like, there's, like there's so much flip right now. And, I mean, like, push the limit. All of his stuff. I mean, like, there's so many pieces that you could – somebody could just show up with a well-tuned Siegfried and you sit down and you go, well, I had this game plan to fucking kill you on three – <laughs> and all my shit's face down, and now I can't. Yeah. So, yeah. 
So I think a good example of a deck like that from last year that we saw make top four was the Johnny Cage, Johnny Cage. that was in top four of teams. Yeah. Um, and because, again, like, you sit down against, like, the it was, what was that team? It was Johnny Cage, Liu Kang, and... Jackie. Jackie, Jackie Briggs. Yeah, okay. So you, you know what Jackie and Liu Kang are doing there, right? Johnny, yeah. it's a little bit of a question mark because he's he's open ended, right? Like you know, he's probably going to be pulling defensive pieces out, doing that kind of stuff. But other than that, like, what the hell is his game plan? Who knows? Mm-hmm. So that that was that. Like, I had to play into that, <laughs> uh, and I had to like figure out this dude's deck as we were playing because I had no playtest experience versus Johnny <laughs> Cage going into that matchup, and it was real close. So. Yeah, um, yeah. If like curve curveballing people, especially with a brand new set dropping like almost immediately before the tournament, is mm-hmm. is not necessarily the worst idea. Now, on the flip side of that, right? If you've got three decks that are well known and really powerful, and your team feels really good about playing them, jam three strong decks and just it might just high. work yeah. fine. Yeah, just right. keep rolling the dice. And if they're yeah. the kinds of decks that have seventy thirty matchups, just do it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It can't like there is nothing wrong with that approach whatsoever. It's just yeah, these are the three best decks in the format, and we're just going to execute like really, really well all day, and we're going to pick our matchups correctly, and we're just going to win everything. Yeah. Sure, that can absolutely work. And so. yeah, the matchup proponent is a huge part of it. And yeah, if you've got an open ended character that you can get to, that's fantastic. You can always sneak in a sideboard character here or there, like a sneaky Jetta in the sideboard for your deck, but. Usually, yeah. Just, just, go just make sure efficient. you check with your uh, teammates before you do that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Watch, yeah. watch those Ermax guys. Yeah. <laughs> Back in 2019. <laughs> All right. So, so with with teams, uh, usually that goes of one full day. It's, uh, did we cover everything on teams so far before we move into yeah. singles? So, yeah, we're good. Okay, so we're good. So singles is a different beast, really. Um, you want to play. <laughs> I guess you can kind of take the same mindset to where you play the best deck that you want to bring, but you don't necessarily need to bring, like, because since diversity is an issue, you have to be the best of that character if you're bringing one yeah. of the strong decks. Right? So You have to be the best you. You have to be the best you. Yeah. So you have to be the best Akuma, you have to be the best Jetta. And my last, I can actually... Uh, attest to this last year i was in a i didn't make tops i was close to at worlds but i was in a diversity fight with danny mosley we were the top two you modern men going into the yeah, final round you were in hands away from topping yeah i was in hands away from topping yes we know this um uh but through the entire match like through entire i'm sure to say through the entire day when me and him kind of distance ourselves from the rest of the you modern men we were always checking in and saying hey how are you doing Sure, there's friendly <laughs> rivalry, you know, and stuff. Like, I didn't want him to. I wanted to be the best Yamato man. So, sure, I yeah. wanted Danny to do well, but I didn't want him to beat me, you know? So, um, it can kind of be, like, a fun thing in a way. It just depends on it. I, I try to look at it as a positive thing, that it, it's going to push you to do better instead of being like, oh, well, I have to deal with these guys, you know? You don't have to cruise in anymore. You have to fight for your in. Mm, sure, yeah. I don't know. If there's anything else anyone else wants to add about singles. I know singles is kind of like a crapshoot in the long run. So <laughs> You're all much more dice than in teams. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're like a, a methodical man like Garrett, you're picking where you want your losses based on the field number. I mean, <laughs> some people, yeah, he's a freak. Most people don't do that. Most people are like, nah, man, I'm, I'm trying to be Swiss champ, so dunk on you or lose. Whatever yeah. happens. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Definitely want Swiss champs. Yeah, so, yeah, for sure, for sure. Oh, absolutely. You, you can't do the strategic loss sh- sh- shenanigans that you. Can well, you know, you can do the strategic losses, and then you just play Heidi, and you lose. Hey, man, <laughs> oh, oh, Tucker's a sniper, dude. We went, we went over this last week. <laughs> Very true. Oh, that's great. So the the one thing I will say about diversity for singles, right, is if if you don't have the confidence that you're going to be the best player of that particular character, then don't play that character. Mm-hmm. Because yep. if you're going in with the mindset that I'm not as good as player X and there's no way I'm going to beat player X through Swiss or so on and so forth, you are sabotaging yourself before you even start. Mm-hmm. 
and you do not want to go into a seven round tournament with a losing mindset because you'll well, be miserable all day. If you want to win, if you think you're just there, especially no, 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 I don't, no, no, I don't. No. Crazy thing to say. Pump, pump, you pump might just that. want to be there. If if you are going to Las Vegas and spending <laughs> the money to play in a UFS tournament, paying for the hotel room, you want doing to all of this stuff, you are there to compete. And you are there to try to win the event. If right. you're there and to socialize and, and doing all that stuff, that's all. fine. But that is not 95% of players that show up. <laughs> I mean, I distinctly, remember, I distinctly remember I was having a conversation about certain individuals that just like to spend money, obviously, and travel for this game for no fucking reason, even though they have no desire to achieve anything. So, like, it's a thing, Dave Wagner. Like, It's a thing, I guess, but, like... Dude, it's like, not a thing for Miles Siler. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, in, I, I would say no. I would say that's like nobody in the in this in this video right now. Every all of us want to win cardboard. There's there's yeah. no. We all want to win. Yeah, I'm so fucking hungry. God damn it! <laughs> like, get a Snickers. Sorry, man. My food's all gone. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I do have my truck now. We're all very proud. Of you. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> Oh. But yeah, like well, I, I do actually back. mean that. Oh my god, everyone talking. Oh, about, go ahead, go uh, ahead. Go ahead I, I do actually mean that. I genuinely didn't think I was going to win as Zoe. Obviously, not worlds, not the diversity or anything. I just went in thinking I should play. Apparently, if I get diversified, I'll get a box of Street Fighter. Which at that point, that was a cool thing to get. I'm sorry, nowadays it's not. But I just wanted to play and see what happened. I didn't think I was going to top. I didn't care about topping. But then halfway through the event, yeah, I was in, like, the top four-ish. So I played for it. But until then, it was just kind of going at it. I mean, I fought Dave. We had a game. I think it was after I fought Dave where I started thinking, oh, shit, I could do this. But before then, <laughs> it was just kind of dirtling around playing UFS. Yeah. Yeah. D d like, again, that's totally a different mindset thing, right? Yeah. But that was like one event after I won my first and only card. So I was probably still riding high, not thinking, I don't care about the world. Yeah. I know I, I had kind of that championship hangover after I won my first champ card or won my character card where it's like, yeah, I'm going to ignore the meta and just play me for two years because it's fun. And I would make top cuts and that's as far as I get. Yeah. <laughs> I won some P PTCs and stuff, but as far as like majors, I would make it into top 16 and then just get crushed. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But... Yeah, that, that's absolutely a thing. But but for the vast majority of the UFS player base, like if you're going to Worlds, make sure you make it worth your while. Yep. Like if if you're going there to play, play to win. Don't don't half ass it. Yep. Like <laughs> if if you're going to have like go o, o two and drop and then just enjoy Vegas, like that's fine. There's some great people there to hang out with. But while you're in the event, take it seriously. Yeah, like, I, yeah, I, I, I don't want to say don't go O2 draw. Yeah. There are prizes for every round, but not only that, you learn stuff. Yeah, yeah and that you was, might that end up five two. I, 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 I know people yeah, do yeah. go O2 drop. And yeah, that's just sad, man. Yeah, Keep you that. should you should always finish out a Jasco tournament because there there's prizes through every round. Well, yeah. at the PTCs, they give out all your promos at the end of uh, at the end of the of the event, so you play through every round, but. You should you play through it. I asked Fam in Rochester. I was like, Fam, if I drop after round four, do I still get four hyper bombs? He's like, Yeah. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh well, okay then. <laughs> but I played. I played round five anyway. But yeah, but you, you want to make the effort <laughs> because you don't. <laughs> you don't want to feel like you you wasted an opportunity because if you go there and yeah, say you scrub out, but. <laughs> You should still play because UFS is always constantly... You're always learning in UFS. You're always becoming... Yeah. You're evolving into a better player no matter what. It's just... Sure. Sometimes people have bad days and, you know... But, like, I want to say, like... Here in Rockford, we've been in... Me and Trent, uh, a local player, are going. And a couple guys from Chicago are coming out to Worlds. So, like, our play groups have been in this Worlds testing type... Um, mode where we're playing all these hyper competitive decks and we're trying to really you know hone in on our on our fundamentals and our and our rules and all that stuff so um it may seem like we come off a kind of kind of dickish when we're playing locals to some people because that's how you uh, you should be at worlds if someone breaks a rule or if someone flips an extra card or you should be like no i'm getting a judge you should instantly call a judge you know nah. 
we give that speech to all the Omaha players. Yeah. Like since we, we turn out so many new people and then they show up to travel. Yeah. One of the first things yeah. that we say to them when we get to the venue is, is I have a player meeting with everybody. I'm like, look, you traveled all this way and you spent this money to come here and you want to win this event. So when you're sitting down across from me, if I draw an extra card, call the judge. Yeah. If you yeah. knock your deck over, I'm calling the judge. Like, and as soon as the tournament's over, we can go back to being bros. But like, I'm not giving you free wins because you made mistakes. Right. Like I showed up here to, to do well. And so did you. And it's cool to be bros and look out for each other. And, you know, oh, I, I'm in a situation where I'm getting diversified and I'm going to give you the win. Well, whatever. I don't care about that. But understand that, like, there are people that play this game that will make a mistake and be like, do you mind? And you're going to be facing yourself and and your your desire to be at the top of the slider where a lot of us want to be and have to make a decision where you're going to like an asshole for a minute. But it's because, like Dave said, you traveled to Vegas, you paid all this money, you practiced and grinded this deck out, you've used all this information, and now you're going to sit down across from someone that you can call a brother and give them the win so they can get to the place you want to be because they made a poor decision? Fuck that. Yeah. Excuse my yeah. friend. Yeah. Exactly that scenario last year? I I had that happen to me at nationals because someone didn't know how an interaction. Yeah. yeah, it was that it was, someone didn't know the interaction with fueling up, and I killed him. I burned him. I killed him off the burn, and he oh, wanted to take it back. Yeah. And I said no. And he called the judge over, and I and they're like, "Do you want to walk it back?" I'm like, "No, you should know the rules." And then we went on to game two. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're damn right. Yeah. There is there is something called game integrity, and. You're both responsible for making sure the rules are being enforced correctly, right? Correct. Like yeah. if 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 you catch your opponent doing something and don't say anything, then you're just as liable if that comes back and and there's some screwed up nonsense afoot. Like you're just as responsible for that. Sure. And you can get a game loss too, I think. I think that's I mean, I'll call yeah, the judge on myself. That. Yeah. You know, I'll have something where something will happen. I'll be like, oh, I did this and I don't, hold on, let me call the judge. Like, I don't know what yeah. I'm supposed I to do. I ripped yeah. an extra card by accident or whatever. Like, I, we, had that in, uh, I had that in Atlanta. Like, mm-hmm. I was I was playing Goro and I was playing against like Kosak and he's like a five hander. And so I was like looking at his character and I was like, yeah, five handers, man. And I draw <laughs> my like opening hand and like didn't even five look hands, at him. Five cards. <laughs> and I was just like, and I like, I like started to flip him over. I was like, wait a minute. And I put him down. And I'm like, crap, I have like five cards. I don't know which one. Like, so I just called fam. I was like, fam, like I drew five cards. I haven't looked at them yet, but I don't know what order they were in. And he's like, well, then just shuffle your deck and like let him cut again. I was like, all right. Yeah, fair enough. What a good that's man, awesome. that Ryan. Yeah. Recoverable game state. So, yeah. 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 Uh, cool. But yeah, you know, I was just like, I don't know what, to, I was like, I, don't, I mean, if I get a warning, if he get like, I don't care. I just want to make sure like, I'm just like, I just want the judge to make his ruling or whatever, because like, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to like tell my opponent, oh man, like, don't worry about it. It's just like, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, yeah. I'd rather just have someone else tell me what, like what the ruling is. And then that way, like, you know, you want a third, I'm, yeah. So yeah, like, so, you, so it doesn't look like you cheated your opponent by selling something. Yeah, then yeah, he right. goes into the next round and accidentally does it and says, well, this guy did it that way. And then he finds <laughs> out that you cheated. Yeah. And it's like, what the F? So you at least have a judge, like a third party or someone who's running the tournament come in and, yeah. you know, correct like, I'll, it. I'll yeah. give two examples, right? Like Shoemaker in the top eight cuts of Atlanta a couple of weeks ago, like, He's, he's one of my best friends. He's been my teammate forever, right? And he got a deck check error going into top cuts. Mm. Was I, was I going to spot him game two so we could go into game three on an even keel? Hell no. Absolutely not. He wouldn't have done the same thing for me. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. you, you go by what the rules say, and that takes all of the emotion out of it. It takes the, the quote, liability or whatever mm-hmm. out of it from the player's standpoint. And you move on with your life, right? Like, yeah. it, it, is, it is what it is. So... I've I've had I've gotten dinged hand, like I've been, I played this game long enough I've gotten judges called on me for mistakes I've made like it's it happens right like yeah. on on a long enough timeline it's going to happen to you and it, it it's okay it's not the end of your UFS career yeah that's, and the thing yeah. that people got to remember is is not to take it personally like yeah, that's because the that, that's the biggest part of it is is like it's not I'm not being a yeah. dick to you because I hate you it's you made a mistake and you that. 
I'm sorry. Like we said, I paid to be here. I want to win this fucking cardboard, yeah. you know, this plane yeah. ticket, this whatever. It is, so, it is no, it is no different if if we were playing soccer and I just scooped the ball up in my hands and ran it down <laughs> half the pitch and then yeah. dropped it and kicked a goal. And my opponent's team was like, Hey, seems like a pretty good guy. We'll let him get it. He still, he bought me a yeah, beer at the like ball last night. Yeah. No fun. That. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I actually have an example too. Um, I think the first four times I fought miles, we each called the judge like every single time on something completely different. And that's fine. We're learning things, you know? Like, you didn't know the printed damage on a multiple was zero. But this was, like, 2014, you know? Like, <laughs> things happen. I still think yeah. you're a cool guy. First PTC, about to win the game. Guy plays his last attack, multiples in. I've got the block in hand. I go, man, it looks like I can't do anything. Garrison Burnell wins the match, then proceeds to tell me at the end, you could have popped getting a ride and play the wall committed to put the printed speed of this multiple to zero and blocked it and beat my ass and made top cuts at your first event. So that Never actually, made that fucking mistake again. So that actually yeah. dovetails nicely into another point about World's Prep, and that's know the rules. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that may be the most yeah. important thing we've said all night, is to know yeah. the rules. No, no, yeah, no, no, that's a good one. I'll yeah. let y'all talk about that and get another beer. I'll be right back. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> um, I was actually doing something at Worlds last year in every round of singles, and there was only, I think, one of my opponents who didn't question me or at least try to call the judge. Um, when multiple yeah. cards enter your discard pile simultaneously, you're allowed to pick the order. So if I was doing, like, one of Jet's things where you flip two, and I was playing Faith, I'd pick the one that I want on top. Hey, that's a plus four. So it looked like I was palming them because I would just, like, switch them in my hand like this and put the other one on top. So, like, no. a couple people go, uh, no, that that's in the rules. You're allowed to pick the order. Yeah. That's what happened when I was playing Earth Vicious. I was, I, Mepha's Assault says, pitch two momentum as the first enhanced yeah. commit all their face downs. So when you pitch the two momentum, there's no rule that dictates where momentum comes from and what order it goes in the discard pile. So if there was something in my momentum that I wanted to recur, a.k.a. Yeah. Yeah. missile launcher from the turn before, I would just put the missile launcher on top of my deck commit all your shit, and then pick the missile launcher up. And somebody called the judge and was like, he put a missile launcher from his momentum on top of his discard pile. <laughs> and sure, uh, Shane walked over and goes, well, you can do that. There's no order of operations yeah, for the cost. So I could see Shane going like this. He could see him like, yeah, he did. And yeah, then just walk away. Yeah, he sure did. <laughs> he sure did. <laughs> <laughs> it's like new momentum, but that card's a ghetto surveyor. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, mean I guess that's something too. Is like, even if even if you're like sitting across from somebody and you're like, oh my gosh, like you know, I've heard about this guy, like he's won cardboard, or like, oh man, like you know, this person's like a really well known player. Oh man, his hair like, looks don't, so don't good. Work for it, man. Like if if you're <laughs> you something and you're just like, is that right? Like you can call the judge. Yeah. Like don't feel bad about it. it. Yeah. I mean, I know oh, too. Dude. Like. Every time I've, there's like a rule change, you see a bunch of players that have been playing forever, and they're like, "What? Yes, like that's I not agree. how this like uh, what's the the new one like sublimating blade?" And they're like, "That's not how like typhoon worked." And it's like, "Well, <laughs> yeah, well that's not how it worked like changed four years ago." Was, yeah, was oh years. man, multiples have printed values now. In quotes, they yeah. didn't have printed values before, but now in the card pool, multiples have printed values. Any anybody who has been on the UFS Discord for any amount of time knows that I ask rules questions fucking constantly, and I've been playing this game since 2006. Yeah, because it is a complex as fuck game, and it feels like there's like weird little nuances that change like every couple every of set. Or so. yeah. yeah, yeah. Some sometimes every every, every set. Yeah. So don't ever. ever ever feel bad about calling a judge and asking how something works. Yeah. It's okay. Who was it? Um, um, what's his name? Daniel Schusler was playing Snake Man when I was playing Terry, and we learned that Terry didn't say printed so he could kick multiples and get damage off the multiple. And nobody had known this, and then me and AJ figured it out, and I had set the turn up. Daniel had me dead to rights, and I I had used the trick that I talked about earlier with getting a ride and popping and putting back multiples to zero and blocking them. Did that, <laughs> draw my tiger kick after I stacked it, did all this shit with Merciless Master, play tiger kick, pitch his last multiple, he's all tapped out, and he goes, oh, you don't get the damage, that's stupid. And I was like, judge, <laughs> reads Terry, goes, Terry doesn't say printed, it gets nope. three, nope. and he can kick multiples because it's an attack card or whatever the case may be, and yep. beat Daniel Schuster that way, and he was salty as fuck. 
But that's a really good example. A yeah. really good example. Yeah. 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 So we've done a bunch of like kind of like theory crafty, like how to do tournament prep and how to get ready for the event. Do we want to get into like the projected meta a little bit? Yeah. I, I let's don't know do where that. else we want to go. Yeah, here. We, can, we can do that. So. And then I think we can do some. Uh, we can talk about, I guess, the pricing a bit after that, if we can do that. I don't know anything about the pricing. Yeah, that's fine. So, yeah, let's talk about the projected meta. Okay. It's going to be awesome, kids. That's all I'm going to say. Continue. Expect no. to see Akuma. Oh, yeah. Expect to yeah. see Goro. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, well, yeah, I think from last year's world, where we had just one set with these powerful characters, now we've had yeah, four sets. I mean, it's definitely a lot better than that. Yeah. I mean, it's it's going to be more diverse. Like, yeah. I, I don't love, I mean, I've sort of, you know, been on record of this. It's like, I don't love, like, the direction of, you know, the way things are going in general. But it is so much nicer now that we have had, like, four sets come out, like, that I don't oh. have to go to a tournament and basically be like, well, if I want to do well, I pretty much have to play one of these eight characters. Yeah. Like, you know, you at least have that real, like, difference. freedom to, like, choose some stuff. Mm -hmm. And, like, sure, you know, like, you'll probably, there'll probably be, like, two or three other people that are like playing your character if it's good but like yeah it's not that kind of like crushing like you're going to show up and there's going to be 12 people playing the yeah. same character we're not going to have a spike one atlanta all over again uh, yeah or, i don't i don't i'd be surprised yeah. 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 to have like Luke another Kang, Jackie game Bush yeah. 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 right man there's like three yeah. characters that pick up like almost 30 percent of the field i don't yeah. think that's going to happen no i don't um, either be surprised yeah, yeah. i do I, think i think oh go ahead dave um no nah, like yeah just just like rob said i don't think we're gonna see like we did in in atlanta for nationals where we mm -hmm. had just such a drastic spike of like the top tier and then everything mm -hmm. else yeah. it's it's way more leveled off than mm -hmm. it was before. and honestly we've only seen like one to two maybe three akumas at most events so it might not even be many of them i think that's kind of the only uh, I think I, out, I think we'll see. I think we'll see a, a, a nice. I, I, oh, no, I'm not. I'm not saying one to two Akumas. I'm oh, just saying in general we've only seen that as opposed to like four or five spikes oh, before. Yeah, okay. but, oh, yeah, yeah, be yeah, Akuma. You can still still logic counter that. We already talked about this. Dave brought this up earlier. Yeah. Akuma's got yeah. the same play, gameplay. He has to. There's yep. no other way, really, way to play Akuma. His uh, his support is so authenticated towards him and so made to work so well. And the rest of the cards that are being printed, it's not like Akuma got some magic piece that we we all know about that we need to be afraid of. Like, mm -hmm. if you're playing Akuma, he's playing his lineup and you know what's coming, which means that if you've played this game for any amount of time since the Street Fighter vs. Dark Soccer set came out, you can play against Akuma. Like, yeah. he's still yeah. a piece of shit. We all know that. He's still strong as hell. But, like, his map, we can all read his map. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and he won't be anywhere like the Liu Kang thing. Yes, you could kind of read Liu Kang too, but this is different. And of course, new hotness has come out since then. People are going to move on. If there were some people that were iffy, they'll find Soul Calibur characters to go with. Yeah, Rob, I think Rob, you're, you're muted yourself. Sorry, I was trying to be considerate. <laughs> I should just I should just do the whole show muted, right? Ooh, we, we Jason would really like so it. Flat. Not not all <laughs> heroes wear capes. <laughs> To quote Miles, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Not all heroes wear capes, Robert Schneider. You go ahead and you hit that new button, buddy. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, even even the Akuma though. I know, like the um, in Arkansas in Top Cuts, the Zhang Hua that was playing Akuma, like tried to block. I think like a coffee samba with um, like Yin and Yang. And then mm. they just, like, flipped it so he didn't get responses. And if he had, yeah. like, waited for the first multiple, then he would have been okay. So, like, there's just, like, little stuff like that that, like, you know, there's still some sort of, like, matchup details that are, like, good yeah. to know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. just, to, just to brush up, like, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if, like, Dave said, I guess, like, the other thing, too, is, like, just definitely expect to see, like, big, like, Earth or, like, go, you know, just, like, missile launchers, <laughs> not actors, like, Dark Chirito, like, there's going to be some big low attacks. Like, make yeah. sure you got low blocks. Make sure that you have, like, ways to deal with speed, ways to deal with stun. Like, <laughs> Dave Wagner. <laughs> <Art. laughs> I no, know, I'm just looking at that really spicy-ass Earth shit again, because, like, we talked about this on the episode with me, Dave, and Church. Mm -hmm. um, 
Earth is one of those symbols that, like, you're not seeing it right now, but could show up to fucking worlds and dunk on all of us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, I don't know if you, you noticed, just, Miles. You just saw Tim Keefe take oh. Atlanta with Earth yep. Lilith. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah, true. Oh, all right, but Lilith can, uh, sans chaos, Earth and water Lilith can do that regardless. But I'm talking, like, we're talk- we, we said something earlier. Siegfried can show up under Earth. Vicious can show up under Earth. Earth's Earth 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 Earth. super deep. So, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, what's his name? Um, Woodman can show up. Um, Guile could show up maybe and do something. Uh, <laughs> all, all, all I'm saying is, is that there are Earth characters that we all have kind of just yeah. been ignoring. Yeah. Because we, Maxi exists. Jet. Jet's got Earth. Yeah, Jet's yeah, fine. Fine. Yeah, Jet too. Jet, yeah. Jet's, Jet's, right? Jet's fine. Support, I hear. Yeah. yeah so, Earth's, like, Earth's character pool is like super deep. So. Yeah. Yeah, there's that they have a super super deep batch as far as. But you also still, it's another Akuma situation where you know the map. If you sit down across from a character with Earth, you're all, you're gonna run into missile you launchers. Know, you know half of that. Yeah, you, know, yeah. you can count on missile launcher. About it. Yeah, you can right count there. on missile launcher Nutcracker. Yeah. And maybe Dark Chirito, but every Earth deck doesn't run it. But it's it's like, what's the special sauce other than that? That's that's where people get fucked up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, like, yeah, those those two cards are pretty much too good to not run in those symbols at this point. Like, there's yeah. too much good good synergy with them. But it's where where do you go from? Because that's not your whole attack base, right? No, it's where you go from. It's there. Where 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 do you go past that to fill in the gaps? Uh, that's where that's where your spice comes with that symbol. Yeah, yeah. or with good too, right? Yes, yeah. that's but, same shit. So, so Miles, last year, um, I believe it was before Worlds. I had a, uh, I had sort of like an open bet where I said like, you know, if an Earth deck like won, I would like go on record that I was going to eat like an entire bowl of like borscht, and I hate beets, hate it. And so like we're getting ready, like you know, people are talking up like worlds this year, and Tim Keefe is like, hey, uh, here, man, <laughs> hey, hey, you gonna, you gonna uh, double up on that uh, this year? You think you're gonna do it again? I was like. God no! <laughs> I was like, that, no, that is out of the bag. Yeah. You'll definitely get dunked on, and you'll have a new you'll have a new admiration of beats at that point. Yeah. I was like, I mean, no I'm way! Good. Like Earth is Earth is like I think probably like a top three symbol easy. Yeah, I mean we, yeah, we like, literally talked about, about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you missed the whole in, thing, Rob. Well, you know, it was in all of our top threes when we talked yeah. about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was evil Earth, evil. Earth's good together because their yeah, their yeah, thing yeah, is the yeah. same, yeah, and yeah. we put all up there because we all knew Maxi was going to be a thing. Yeah. But now that's not a problem anymore. Not to say that Earth all is is still really really good, but like yeah. we're still we're talking about vicious dot character because yeah. we're like all Earth and evil. Yeah, fair <laughs> point. Yeah. That is a good, good point. Yeah, yeah, it really does. That's just yeah. that's just a good character. Do you yeah, think? He's such a good, okay, so he's such a good character that nobody's been running. Do you <laughs> no, think really, that? I think, I think that's something too. Is like, what? I think you're gonna see like the Bebop characters get dusted off for this too. Like, I think they really sort of fell out of favor in part because like they weren't the only thing to play, but also I think people just got sick of playing them. You know, I think there were like a couple holdouts that really you know there were big fans, and you know just continue to run them, but. I think a lot of people just sort of wanted to try out the new stuff and just, you know, got tired of running like the same thing, like for, you know, effectively mm-hmm. like a year. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Here's, so here's a interesting observation on that, that I, cause I was, I was thinking about that the other day, Rob, actually. Right? Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, oh, yeah. well we, we had these, we had these bebop characters that like literally redefined UFS. Yeah. So, like if, if, if you want to put like that heaviest stamp on it, right. Like that set. I mean, for sure. Modern UFS. Exactly. Yeah. Right, like yeah. for for where UFS is right now, that was like the launch pad, right? And mm-hmm. and the the characters didn't get worse. Like what changed was, especially with Mortal Kombat, and but even more so in Street Fighter versus Star Soccer's, like the character synergy packages that got built in with these characters, like the newer characters, the non Bebop characters, got mm-hmm. better. Right. Yeah. So you you look at a character like I'll take like Lord Lord Raptor as, as an example that I've played a ton of, right? Mm-hmm. Like you have twenty to twenty five cards out of almost any deck that you build with him that are like an auto include, right? It's like anywhere between like eleven to maybe twelve attacks if you depending on how deep in his kit you want to go. 
probably yeah. eight to 10 foundations and mm-hmm. may, maybe a couple more other than that. Maybe it's more like 12 foundations with him in particular. But anyway, that's just an example. And that's half your deck, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's a strong half of your deck because the character synergy is, is there. Kin, and, my Kin deck. Yeah, that's that's a great example too. Like, Kin's base lineup, his foundations. Why wouldn't I play right, what is it? Right. four Kurabushi, four Foot Slam, four Violet Shoryu, four Not Over to Your Dead, four uh, I Feel Violet. That's right, right, right. what yeah, is that's, it? That's, that's kind of cards. Of Violet so, Tatsumaki out the window. Yeah, whatever. Uh, you run that in like <laughs> Zasala Mill now for memes. memes. Uh, <laughs> but but the, the point I, made, I, I was getting to here is uh, with Soul Calibur, like a lot of the really good cards in that set are kind of just generically, maybe not like overwhelmingly powerful, but strong. Mm-hmm. I right? mean, they are though. They yeah. are, Dave. Like we talked about um, Thief, Ghost Thief. Like, like that I, card. That card's really good. I don't consider that card like overpowered good though, right? Like, right, it's, but it's generic as fuck. Like exactly. you can anyone, yeah, all right. character, and they can just play face yeah. out on the end of that card, and you're fucked. Yeah, right, that's right. You're, you're in a good, and that's kind of what I'm getting at, right? So if, if you look at some of the Bebop characters that kind of fell out of favor, like Jet and like Spike One and a couple of the other, like Faye and a few other characters that were kind of, that kind of fell off over the last two sets, like they got some good stuff just because they got generically powerful cards mm-hmm. that don't like, you don't have to run a super synergy driven lineup with some of these characters and you're fine. Correct. Yeah. Right. Um, like I've been playing spike one a lot and that character is still really good <laughs> and got even better. So yeah, like, and I've seen, and again, we, we've been talking up vicious. Like that's a perfect example. Like, yep. That dude didn't get any worse. He just got a better toolkit. Yeah, like, He's right? never like, really oh, had a that- gimmick. That character who he doesn't need one. second yeah. in that's last year. Yeah. 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 He's still pretty no damn good. Plays. So so I don't I don't think that like I think that's really what it was, is you saw Spike One fall off because and I'll tell you straight out, he fell off because Quan Chi was like a zero ten matchup. Yeah. Yep. And then by well, the time Quan Chi was a better replacement for him. It, yeah. And eh, he did he, he worked a little bit differently. But yeah, your your point's not yeah. invalid, right? If yeah, if I you mean, want a strong symbols. seven hand size character on those symbols, like Quan was broken and Spike was really good but not busted. Yeah. <laughs> right? So just, and so you could just play Spike in the deck and do what he did if you needed if, to if do you really that. wanted to, sure. <laughs> if you yeah, you I don't know that. why you would, but it's something yeah. that could happen. Yeah. The option was there, right? Yeah. So like so yeah, and then by by the time like the Quan ban happened like two weeks before Worlds, because I, I had a Spike One deck going into that meta that I really liked, and then I tore it apart because I couldn't beat Quan Chi's. Yeah. And then Quan got banned like ten days before the tournament. And I'm like, I don't really have time to tune this to get it back to the point where I want it. And then so the only person who really played him through uh, that meta was Garrett, really, that had like a good amount of success with it. And he got stuck in a like zero ten matchup with top cuts and got boxed. But, yeah, like that character is still real good. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I, I think I think you will see Bebop characters, maybe not in like bulk, but they will be a presence for sure. Yeah. So yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's yeah, cool. Right. yeah. Cool. I think you're gonna see a little bit of everything. Yeah, I right? think. Yeah, I think so. Be a well. lot more variety. Yeah, I do. I do. This is gonna be a fun meta to try and get a read on. Honestly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it's I'm gonna be, really enjoy seeing what people bring and seeing what people found in Soul Calibur. That's gonna be really fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm really I, looking forward to that. That's what I'm looking forward to the most, like just the theory crafting, because we already know we, we we talked about the things that are good, but I love showing up to tournaments and sometimes even being the person behind that that oh shit, I didn't see this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love getting surprised at the tournament. Like yeah. that's like win, win like again, I've been playing this game for so long that like win win lose whatever, I'm gonna have a good time. But when I can go away from a match going like I don't know what the hell I just played against, but it was really cool. And I really enjoyed sitting down and playing against it. Like most recent one I had was at, was this Atlanta? Yeah, this was Atlanta, not the PPDC at nationals. I played against, uh, Shinnok. Oh, and I got, oh. and I got fucking like, 
I think Guardian I was next Slasher to yeah. into like reversal coffee samba. Was that uh, was that Mike table. Nelson? I think so. From yeah, Andy? I don't remember Nationals, the guy's right? name. Yeah. That was a national team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He wow. like parried him and then like race against time. Race, race against time, time to parry out uh, into the coffee yeah, samba. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, and I will tell you the best part of that is when he did that in game three to me to kill it, he checked the coffee samba on the race against time. <laughs> <laughs> he did not have one in his yard to bounce in. And that's the only way he was going to win, and he did it anyway. It was awesome. Like that was such a cool moment. Yeah. Like I was, I was like, I was like, well, fuck it. Like, yeah, dude, you got me. Like, I can't do anything about that. But yeah, like, so, like, so stuff like that. Like, I, I expect to run into, or I expect to see some stuff that we're not even talking about. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. maybe not win the whole tournament because it's impossible to predict like what's going to take the entire thing right mm-hmm. yeah like if, if if you put a gun to my head right now and said dave pick one character win it it'd be akuma but it's not like it's not like it was last year where there's such like a massive gulf between the top tier mm-hmm. and like a two mm-hmm. so um yeah i i fully expect to see stuff in top 16 that like if we did a post world's sh- follow-up show we'd be like dude did you see that insert character here deck that was like Super Dude, cool. I lost to that Yoshimitsu. Yeah. All it did was throw lows, and it worked. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But whatever. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think this is going to be a really, really fun world because of that. Mm-hmm. So, sure. Yeah, because because no one's excited. talking about like Zazalamel or anything like that. Because people are just saying, well, he's kind of bad, but someone may bring he's him. He's got in. some hot plays. He's got okay, some stuff, he's got man. Real hot plays. He's got he some sides stuff. Sides into Goro, real it's, good. It, he's it, it, done. If you want to meme on people with weird cards that shouldn't be reversals? Yeah. That's your dude. That's your like, dude for real. Like yeah. Shang Shanghua can win, windmill punch you, which everyone sees coming. <laughs> like. Yeah. The Solomon can windmill punch you and they're all five mid for nine. Yeah. yeah. That is cool. Weird shit. Yeah. 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 Very true. Yeah. All know. right. Except he doesn't know how to get the momentum for it because all of the attacks get removed. <laughs> I tried it for like three weeks and I didn't know what to do. <laughs> but, okay, so just pretty much uh, for moving on, uh, you'll get prizes. Uh, the way they do prizes at these, uh, at these events are they usually pass out prizes every round. Usually they get true. Traditionally, they get better as the rounds go on. Um, I wouldn't be. I'm gonna. I'm gonna speculate here, and I'm gonna say we're gonna get seventh cross stuff. At, I think we might. I think they may already have I don't it. Think so. I think they may already have it. But it's possible, but yeah. I doubt it. But you never know. I wouldn't be so. surprised. If but I wouldn't be like. I think we're gonna get something out of it, dude. I just want a play mat of any of that dude who throws cars at people. <laughs> dude, like, okay, so that is this, the is the, fucking character. so this is the obligatory <laughs> hashtag Monado for DLC. That's what the, Hell yeah. Hashtag. 1,000%. Yeah. That guy has to win Turbo next year, so, right? So uh, JT messaged me, and he goes, the, the episode we did, Rob, someone ended, someone said, I just want to fucking throw cabs at people, and then the episode yeah. ends after that. Like yeah, it just yeah. was it me? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I forgot who it was. They're just like, yeah. They just want to fucking throw cabs at people, and that uh, that was kind of neat. So I'm hoping we get him in DLC. But um, we get yeah. uh, they upgraded the champ belts this year. They are gold now instead of silver. So that's awesome. It's gonna look good on Tim. Um, you know, <laughs> Timmy three belts. Timmy yeah. three belts with the gold belt around his neck. He's gonna have two. He's gonna hold two and have one around his neck. No, uh, dude, he needs to hold one in his mouth like Pete Dunn. Like Pete Dunn? There you go. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Like Pete Dunn. I don't think I don't think Timmy's jawline can support the weight. <laughs> I don't think so. Either. Tim's a little guy. I'm sorry. We might have lost Rob. Rob's camera's frozen, so I'm not sure if no, we've lost him. Stunned in shock from how awesome that image is of I, Tim holding a belt. I think yep. I think that's yep. correct. So um but we're gonna get play mats, like always, and then they I'm pretty sure they're gonna have some more surprises along the way. So they um, spoiled it. Some of the playmats are yeah, right? uh, yeah, yeah. I think it's, teams one is sick. Uh, ingress is the Lili Two's ingress is just the participation mat. Okay. Uh, I believe the teams mat is Ghost Thief. Yes, yes. and yep. then uh, Let's Cut Loose is singles. I believe that's the maxi one. That's right? the maxi yeah. uh, rare, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. That's for all the maxi players. For all the maxi players out there, <laughs> dude, that is some salt in the wound for anybody that is going to run him. Like, yeah. Congrats, you made top cuts. Here's this sweet play map for this character you can't play. Do you think, okay, so that would be kind of hilarious if, you know, since they might have not printed all those mats yet, that they just scrap that and make something new? Because they print all their own mats in-house, so. 
Yeah, dude, they yeah. just need to have that mat just with like the big red like X sign or like an it. RIP yeah. across it, just like write RIP, you know? Oh, poor Matsy. But yeah. just put it in like grayscale. Yeah, there you go. That look terrible. Okay, Crazy. so we're at the point of the episode that I want to get the three gentlemen that who are not usually on the guile treatment. I need their predictions, because... So that's Dave, Miles, and Rob? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Very true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what what I need from you guys is attendance, two winners, and how many diversities? And your points are going to count towards the guest points on our rolling scale of PTC winners and stuff like that, so... Okay, so when you say winners, are you talking like particular characters? Characters, yes. Uh, only singles, yeah. Only singles. So we're only okay. talking singles. So we're going to go attendance first. So um, what we'll do is we'll start with Dave, go to church, go to Miles, and then we'll do Dave, church, Miles, and then Miles, church, Dave for the two for the characters, and then we'll just do the same order again for diversity numbers. So you can... And we, you guys can collude because, yeah. you know... Because, yeah. It's all guest points. Because you're all the guest points. You're all the guest points. So you guys can go. What, what, what was the attendance for Worlds last year? You know? I believe it was... 111 and then 112. Or 110 then 111. I know it went yeah. up by one. It went up by one. Okay. I thought yeah. it was like 120 something. Or that was two years no. ago. That was... They went yeah. down this past year. Okay. Yeah. And that I... one was Marcus Singleton and then people cheered for him. Yeah. <laughs> I, ex- I picked 110 this year, but I actually Same. think we're going to hit over 130. So... I, I'm thinking, oh no, I'm last. Yeah, you're last. Day of attendance. So, Soul Calibur is a pretty big draw for a lot of people, right? Yeah. Um, just how, like, Mortal Kombat has its own, like, rabid community. <laughs> uh, so does Soul Calibur. Like, I know I know here locally in Atlanta, like, like that's my first or second favorite fighting game series of all time. Um, and... Uh, there's a couple other Atlanta players who feel the same way, which is mm-hmm. pretty cool. Uh, not all of them are going to Worlds, but the fact that it like really drummed up interest back in the game was that's good, interesting, That's good. So I don't, I don't know if we hit 130. I'm gonna say 125. I okay, think that seems reasonable. Mm. So church. I think we get more than last year, but not like drastically. Okay, sounds good. So, church, yeah. Um, I want to say like 117, but you people are having some good points. I mean, it's going to be more than last year. That just makes sense. We've had a few new players popping up left and right, and less people have been dropping since, you know, Bebop people drop, but less afterwards. And, hey, for everyone that dropped, we got two new players, so everyone's happy about that. So where does top 32 kick in? That's like 130-something, right? No, you got to go. One sixty something, yeah. That's that's not happening. Uh, I mean, we're not going to get. Is it at one twenty eight? Oh yeah, it's one twenty eight. That's what it oh, is. Oh yeah, or one twenty nine because then okay, you'll right. actually have you an undefeated. It. Yeah. Ooh. That'd be crazy if we got top thirty two. That's I actually be able to make tops out of one thirty two. There you go, Chris. Good oh, job. Oh man, if it's if he makes top thirty two, can we redo all our diversity picks? <laughs> god, that is oh me. my god, that would be a nightmare. Yeah, dude. we go from one to two to a dozen. Yeah, for fuck's sake, dude. You you would have people like if if we had a top thirty two cut, that's an eight round tournament for one, which yeah. is like a long fucker. Of a day. That's yeah. a day. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like you you have at that point people who went like seven and one getting chopped. Yeah, and that feels. Real bad. Yeah. Real, real bad. Real bad. Yeah. Like, so what did you say, Dave? 125, you said? I said 125. That's yeah. like right on the cusp of top 32 then, too. That's Are we sure? Great. It's that's what I, I thought it was I'm like two, 256 for a top 32. It, it might be. But I don't know. I don't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There was a number out there. Well, I remember Worlds a couple years back. We hit like 128, and then a guy signed up late, and there was a discussion, is it going to be 32? And then Jasko had to say no because he was late, it's not, or something like that. <laughs> so what do you, what's your number, Church? 117? Uh, one, two, three. Okay, then. Price is right. right. Miles okay. Tyler. Oh, this is, okay, sorry. Yeah, this is the like Price is Right down. style, too. I should have said that. It is, it is closest without going over, so... That's how I got that points from. That's how I got points. That's how I got points from Arkansas because I was closest without going over. It was great. So, so uh, I always have really big expectations, and yeah. as somebody that grows communities, I I feel like I'm gonna 
I'm going to beat Dave and go 127. Okay. Because okay. I, I want to see, I want to see a top 32. I want to see the shit show. But, like, I know how many people are coming from Omaha. I know that UFSU is going to be there. I know that who's coming from LWG. I know what outliers that aren't associated with LWG and UFSU from Omaha are going to be there. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I'm part of the sponsor player chat. So, like, I have my players that are LWG sponsored talking about people who are going to be there. Vegas is going to show up because it's home turf, and there's no reason to not go play UFS for free. Yeah. Even if they're not, not like, solidified players in the community anymore. Like, you don't hear from Brandon Jones anymore. You're not hearing from, from um, what's his name, uh, the ginger kid. Ryan McClain. Ryan McClain. <laughs> like, all these Vegas guys, the Vegas community is kind of falling off the map. But, I mean, if you can play UFS and you know how to play, there's no reason not to show up at level up. Get a uh, I know they, they went out to the re, the last California PTC, uh, Ryan, Tim, and Brandon. So, I, from yeah, what Tim has told me, the, they're kind of picking up again. stuff is picking up a little bit again. Yeah. But, yeah. Right, right. But I'm saying, like, these are people that we're not hearing about. Yeah. So, like, yeah. mm-hmm. and there's no reason why people that have been learning in Cali uh, have, aren't going to show up. So... I'm thinking it's going to be really, really big, like it, 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 like it hasn't been before. I'm hoping that it's going to be really big because of all the new licenses. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, like I'm not going to say 140 because I, I, I know I'll bust, but like, like close to one, 130, uh, somewhere between 125 and 130. Yeah, seems pretty good. So Which okay, is 127. So I, just, I just looked at the floor rules, guys. Uh, there is no stipulation in UFS for a top 32 cut. Yeah, I'm seeing Caps that at a top too. 16. Yeah, so 65 is, plus. Yeah, exactly that. So we, we do not have a rule structure in place for a top 32, That's which is bad. fine. Yeah. Because if you start doing that, then you need to do like full blown two day tournaments. And that's a whole different beast. Yeah, that's so, yeah. yeah. I've got, yeah. I, I remember versus two day, three day, mm-hmm. four day tournaments, and uh, even the old Score Z had multiple day tournaments. So yep. yeah, that stuff was rough. That stuff. Yeah, really I, I played in a Netrunner 256 person tournament, made day two, and uh, yeah, that was a long yeah. day. <laughs> okay, so Dave, you, anyway, get, you're, so. you get to pick a winner. You We'll go through, we'll go Dave, Church, Miles, Miles, Church, Dave. You get to each pick two winners, so two characters who you think who can win the event. Okay, I guess well, Dave's I'm going to take the easy pick and say Akuma. Yeah, I, yeah. I figured that. I already yeah. had you pretty much done. Uh, Chris, do you what do you want to do for the guest up? Do you want to just if they all pick Akuma and he wins, they get four points, or yes. do you want to just like okay? <laughs> yeah, they get yeah. There you go. You guys can just stack it if you really. You guys can years. stack it if you want. There you go. But that's no fun though. You always want to try to beat everybody else. But yeah, whatever. It's up to you guys. So. Church. Church. Uh, what's what's uh, Tim playing? Chris, you're on his team. He doesn't know. I'm not telling. God damn it, Sophie. Picking Sophie. Okay. She was not picked on the way back. She was not or picked pick- last night, by the way. So some no. picks from last night to let you guys know. Uh Zhanghua, Lilith, Akuma, Spike One, Akuma, Taki, Cassie, and Jetta. So those are some of the characters that were picked from last night. So. A good pod. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good pod. You can't say Terry, Miles. <laughs> I mean, you can. You can. You just, you just be wrong. <laughs> it's not going to go anywhere. But. Well, I be, well, technically, <laughs> Sig- this is what I'm you know. Siegfried it's technically so is Terry in a way now. In New Jasco, Terry's blonde and drops foundations down. Sure. Wow. We're wow. not having this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Racial profiling, Chris. <laughs> Long blonde hair, blue eyes. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, you rang. What? So if you if you if you haven't seen the back oh, shut up Dave Wagner God damn it if you haven't seen the back wall at LWG yeah he looks like fucking Bogard it's, yeah, it's a thing um he looks like Bogard with armor and a sword yeah. and, 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 anyway and especially um, like Wild Wolf Terry like it's he's right there <laughs> you put a you put a brown jacket on that dude. Yeah, he's punching geese off of a building. It's fine. He's yeah, dad. Dad. It sounds like you need to just play Siegfried and just go get like someone to like paint a jacket on him or something. That'd be hype. We know someone <laughs> who can probably do that. 
Uh, all right, um, Miles, what's, what's, what's the prediction, buddy? Oh, I, I'm, I'm on board with everything you get, that you, you just... You get two picks, so... Yeah, two picks? you get two oh, picks. because he's, he's got the wheel. You got the wheel. the wheel. Yeah. Don't worry, I'm, I'm terrible at this. I go like, this will be easy, and then I'm like... Uh, no. Um, I'm going to pick Jetta. Okay. Uh, two dot, right? Two dot? Yes. Okay. Just asking. Just asking. I know you, you meant know, to. Maybe Piglet is just going to like walk out of the desert with Jetta 1 and be like, <laughs> Suplex City is here. <laughs> no one's ready. You ain't even seen the things he can recruit. And, and, and I'm going to flavor text myself and say Ken too. Ah, oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice, 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 nice. Because I, I mean, I, I just, this is going to be just like me playing Terry. Like, I, I've looked at, I've looked at playing Earth Vicious again. I've looked at playing Siegfried. Um, I, I looked at playing some other characters. But like, running LWG does not dictate that I have a whole lot of time to, to theory craft. Mm. And I really enjoy playing Ken. And I think that I have the fastest deck in the meta. I can be getting ahead of myself. But like, I also don't think that there's going to be a whole lot of people showing up with Ken too. So, if I just dunk on everybody on turn two and don't make the minor mistakes I made in Atlanta, there's no reason why I can't see me making top 16 with Ken 2. Yeah. Cool, man. That works. That's just my opinion. My, if you, you gave me two characters, I agree with Akuma being upstairs or winning. I agree to some degree with Sophie being upstairs and winning. I still think Zhonghua is really strong, but I think knowing some of the people that I know are going to be playing Jetta, I think that Jetta is a character that can win it, and Moonset is fucking broken. Yep. Um, yeah. And I want to put my what a three check. What a three check. <laughs> what a three check. Um, I put my hat in the ring with Ken because I'm I'm hungry as fuck, and yeah. I feel like I can get there. So, very good reasons. Church. Church. <laughs> okay, well, I can understand him saying Ken 2 for himself, so I'm going to go with as well. <laughs> Don't worry, that's a joke. I am neither playing <laughs> I was almost, I was no, writing it. It's, it's already written down. <laughs> I was, no, that shit's already made, bro. We can't take it back. I was it's writing it. You, you may see an Atlanta player playing that character at UFS Worlds. Were they I am not joking. <laughs> That character's way better than anybody thought he was. Oh, I've been playing them. Unfortunately, I know. Uh, my my vote was actually for Tacky. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that seems fine. Dave. So, so I'm I'm back on the bottom end. Yes, right? you are. You are you are here. We are here. Okay, so we've we've had Akuma, we've had Jetta, Sophidia, we've yep. had Jetta, we've had Kentu, we've had Taki on the wheel. Yep. There's so many characters to pick from. That's the cool There's thing. A lot. There is like, and and I wish I could pull a Miles and say, yeah, I'm just gonna put my dick on the table and say whatever character I'm playing. But I still don't know yet. So <laughs> yeah. I still got a week and a half to figure that out. Oh, I got a day and a half. So you know, yeah. <laughs> Technically, you got a week and a day. I, I, yeah, well, I can't test anything. I apologize, Dave. Like putting my dick on the table wasn't on purpose, but like. Hey man, dude, I'm not mad at that at all. If, 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 I, if I knew my pick, I'd be saying it right now. <laughs> Obviously, what you need to do is you need to pick a good character and then just go build that character. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, I'm oh. still torn between like three of them. So, uh, <laughs> you can so tell he's thinking when his face is right up in the webcam. I know. Look at him. He's really thinking. He's probably just like looking through Ultra right now. I sure was too. I just said two Soul Cal characters. <laughs> I know you're wanting to say this Salomo. This is the ass of the model. I wanted to say Goro, because literally no one took Goro. No one took I'm not Goro. Taking Goro. No one no, no I, I think Goro can like random water decks that make it into top cuts. Yeah, yeah I, I Goro's really good, but I think at the end of the day he can just get burned up. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Moonset screws him over really bad. Same thing with Jetta. This like isn't, Moonset yeah, Genesis. this isn't Turbo. This isn't Turbo anymore. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I do think Aura's really good. But Me too. I don't... So, so th this is this is where I'm at, right? And I'm I'm gonna break this down a little bit because you have to you have to look at a character that can make it through an entire top sixteen field of powerful decks with like reasonable matchups into everything, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And and I don't hate any of the picks that 
have already been put on the table, except for maybe Sophie. I don't know if I like that one. Oh, but, wow. Um, but the rest, the rest <laughs> seems fine. I'm yeah. just respecting them three minus two speed, man. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and attacking into her is fucking miserable. Yes, it is. Yeah. So, uh, cool. We, say we got Lilith. you a Sasha. Sounds good. No. Let's say Lilith. <laughs> Lilith? Ooh, nice. I picked her. Yeah, I think I can see that. Right? Yeah, Lilith's... Lilith's I, have, I have faith that if Tim Keefe decides to play that character, he can three-peat. Yeah, I, I, one thing I, I looked at her and I'm just like, well... She turns off one attack a turn, usually your best attack, normally, because you never you're, you usually aren't going to lead into her with your best attack. You want her to make we actually have her think about it. But yeah, she's she's super tough. She can she also lay a beating too. Okay, so how ma how many actual diversities are there going to be, Dave Wagner? Out of 125 people, how many? So that's, uh, that's your attendance pick. Three? Three. All right. Yes. Church, you give me the... people are still going to ID in Final Round. The two? Yes, yeah, because people are stupid, and they're going to scoop, they're going to ID, there's going to be two. Miles Tyler, out of 127 wow. people, how many? Sounds good. That is... I respect that. I respect that as well. Because you know why? I'll just tell you right now. Because of the five characters that we just listed. True. Yeah. <laughs> I think that I think that the group of us that are on the show are pretty well knowledgeable at this game, uh, and making good predictions isn't too terribly hard. Uh, you wanted lottery numbers from my prediction about Shane and JJ being in the finals at, at Arkansas. Uh, <laughs> well, this is my lottery numbers. Uh, I think that I think that. Somewhere between 130 and 125 participants, and um, uh, a diversity off of about five or six characters is what, that's I'm, good. what I'm thinking. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Because there's so many characters from Bebop Ford that that can be lightning bolts. That I, I it's not like like we talked about earlier, where Dave said where you had this massive jump between S tier and A tier. I think the gap between being able to be S tier and A tier is like this big now. Oh yeah, it's real. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. very close. I, I, I still think Akuma stands a little bit above everybody else, but I think yep. right below him, it's way more flat. So, yes. Yeah. A lot, and a lot of the characters that we listed are on that line. They're oh, on the chart. Yeah. That flat ass torque curve on the on the Dino chart, like one hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, so so I don't think there's going to be like less diversity. So like two and three, I see it, but I'm I'm ah man, I would even say somewhere between five and seven because. You're shooting that, big. That, that, I know. That torque curve. Yeah, so I, I'm gonna I get say you. Six. Yeah, I get I'm gonna it. say six. What? You're gonna say six? You're, okay. I'm gonna say six is my final number. We got him at six. Okay, so I'm gonna go over your picks real quick. Dave, 125, Akuma 2, Lilith 2, three diversities. Miles, 127, Jetta and Ken 2, Jetta 2, Ken 2, six diversities. Church, 123, Taki and Sophie with two diversities. Just to go over your numbers, Rob, because I didn't specify your numbers, you got 111, Akuma 2, Spike 1, and 3 diversities. So, yeah. It should be interesting. I think Worlds is going to be a lot of fun, outside the fun stuff that happens leading up to Worlds, but I actually think that it was, just because how the it's just opened up because of all the four sets we've just had, the sets we've had, I think it's just going to allow yeah. us to not be so... Um, Linear? Yeah, that or pensive or tense or whatever you know it's like oh man i'm not fa fighting into 15 different people playing Liu Kang or whatever what you know you know what I'm yeah. saying. so but oh um, dude what so we need to get the guy i can't remember the guy's name the guy who brought his legacy cube to atlanta we need oh to have him show up. rick wait rick, that, yeah, rick, 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 rick didn't okay. go to atlanta oh no he was the one who brought the max yeah yeah. yeah, that's what I was thinking. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which oh. is Atlanta. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, I definitely played it there. Yeah. So I, I, I think, want that as a side event. I, I want think, that as like a sanctioned side event. I want to oh say, God. I think Rick Bergreen is going and he has like, he has a bunch of cubes. So message him if you want him to show up. So. All right. Might have to track. But I think we're going to. Anybody got final thoughts before we close it out? Uh, I, I got one. Go ahead. If you're fighting someone who's got a name to themselves, if you sit down against even a Garrett Brett, just for the love of God, keep your wits about you. Because that's how Garrett gets so many of his wins. Is people get intimidated 
and they mess up and they lose. And like that guy, we were just talking about a little bit, probably like three hours ago, the shang fighting the Akuma and it went for the block on the yin and yang and it, it got flipped and canceled. And there's no block effect. Just stop and think. Even if your opponent's attacking you, you have an hour for your games. The games don't take that long. Just think about all your actions. Don't screw up. Don't do what I did and miss lethal, missing top cuts on one damage when you have a card with your face on it that gives you one damage. <laughs> you know, I literally disrespected my own card and missed tops on that. So think about what you're doing. Some sage advice. Miles, any <laughs> final thoughts? Um, Much like Church was saying, uh, show up and play UFS. I mean, yeah. um. You can spend your whole life training. I mean, you can, it, it, it doesn't, it, it, only, it only matters, matters when your medal is tested when you're sitting there right there. And mm -hmm. the, the yeah. star studded cast of people that play this game and that have won cardboard. Um, and even some of us that haven't won cardboard that are star studded, like, yes, we're good. We know our shit. We read the cards and we, we do a lot for this game. But at the end of the day, that doesn't mean shit. You, we can all get scooped up. Yeah. That don't mean shit. Me and David scooped each other up more times than we can count. Me and Church have scooped yep. each other up more times than we can count. Me and Rob have scooped each other up more times than we can count. Me and Chris, I've scooped up Chris more times than he can count scoop me up. But hey, everybody has their day. Everybody has their day. Yep. So, oh, show up to the event. Show up to the event and have a good time. And uh, just just enjoy yourself. You're you're gonna get to experience something that most trading card game players never get to experience the ability to play the game against your opponent. <laughs> so, so I'll, I'll kind of backpack up off of what miles just said. Um, especially if, if maybe you're not the most experienced player and this is not necessarily even like your first major, right? Yeah. Um, but if you're new to big tournament scenes, like PTCs are one thing. PTCs are usually about 30 or so people and maybe five rounds and nine times out of 10. And this not, is not disparaging any particular play group or anything like that. You've got maybe like five or six killers in that field. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think that's pretty fair to say on your mm -hmm. average PTC. Oh, yeah, for you've sure. Got, you've got like, if, if you had to put these guys in, in the, in the in the chamber and said like all right one of which which one of you is going to win worlds there's maybe like four to five to six out of most of those events mm -hmm. you've got a much broader field of that at these larger majors and what you can take away from that is a learning experience right if if you go in fresh and you go in with an open mind whether you win or lose or so on and so forth and i try to do this every time that i go to a major and say okay I'm going to take what happened today and I'm going to figure out what I can learn from it. Sure. Right. Whether it's learning something about the meta, whether it's learning something about a particular style of deck that maybe you've never seen before, whether it's learning about like, okay, you know, just, just however you want to approach that. Right. Try to learn from it. Um, because that's only going to help you grow. That's only going to help you become a better player. Um, and if your goal is to win cardboard, you don't, you, that's that's how you forge yourself, right? That's it, it. It takes it takes time to do that. Most people don't win cardboard in their first year of playing UFS. It's it's very rare. Like it it takes like this is a complex game that Man. has a lot of nuance to it. Has a shitload of mo like moving parts all of the time, and developing the skills to still execute on a high level after six rounds of tournament play after seven rounds of yeah. tournament play after seven rounds of tournament play and a top cuts run like that's a skill set that you have to develop mm -hmm. right? oh my god yeah you need you, to be able to keep going at it exactly like you you need to you need to like you need to just put yourself in that environment and and learn from this experience right you um, can start playing at 10 a.m and you can keep going at 10 p.m and you'll dude, barely have a food when, like this this was years ago in vegas but the, the most grueling example of that I can think of is my former teammate, Drew Maffei, who in a Top Cuts afternoon had to play Teams Top Cuts, which I think we won. I think we yeah, yeah we, we won think, that year. I think you guys won. We got Lions Dance. We had Lions Dance that year. That was yeah. our first Teams win. Yeah. So he had to play through three rounds of Teams Top Cuts 
He had to play through legacy top cuts, which he won, and then he had to play through standard top cuts. Yeah. That's in one day. Yeah, right. That was yeah. three different beast. formats. That <laughs> and and like twelve to thirteen hours of UFS, and yeah. and he held himself together and he performed really well. Yeah, right. But again, that's a skill that you just kind of have to put yourself in the crucible and just learn. Mm -hmm. Right. You you can't you can't really practice that. Because like doing scrimmage games against your friends is one thing, and that's great, but tournament pressure is like a real thing. And you just need that experience. So Oh, yes. I, I can tell you yeah. that tournament pressure is a real thing. Yes. It for is. sure. Oh yeah. For sure. It definitely yeah. it cost me top cuts last year. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Dude, don't I, I think it, it, it happens yeah. to all of us, man. Yeah. hundred percent it happens to I was gonna I was gonna so chime again, in. If, if and, you're going in as a relatively newer player, again, treat it as a learning experience. Mm -hmm. If you make top cuts, great. See how far you get. Awesome. If you don't don't be upset about it. Learn from it. That's that's yeah. the biggest piece I could say. I was so. going to chime in and say, when you said about the not many people win cardboard within their first year, I was going to be like, well, where's Barrett at? It's the perfect time yeah, for him to chime in. He's a freak of nature. Barrett's, Barrett's the exception. Yes, right? exactly. Like oh, that's, yeah. that's usually not how it goes. And to be fair, that wasn't within his first year. That was at least his third cardboard event, which requires oh, yeah. more than a year. That was his yeah, first. That was his. Barrett had been playing UFS for a long time. So exactly. Like, that yeah. was his first. So. I think he said that that was to the we, to the day or month that is his first like year was Nats to Nats because Nats was his first actual, yeah. Yeah. you know. So Nats to Nats was one calendar year. So that's what yeah, he said. Yeah, he was on the very active play group. Yes, and, and in yes. fairness to Barrett, like he had tournament experience in different games. Oh, very sure. Yeah, yeah. For like sure. UFS for was sure. not his first card game. He, yeah, he'd been. This was not the first time he'd been put in a situation like that. Oh, yeah, I know. So, I know. I just thought yeah, it'd be kind of so. funny just to have him be like, hey, were you guys talking about but, yeah, me? Yeah, but what yeah. about me? Now, yeah, what about I, me, I, so guys? I, Again, but he's, yeah. he's almost, I'm not going to say the lone exception because yeah. I'm not going to deep dive into UFS history at this yeah. point. But like, Oh, yeah. yeah I don't <laughs> he's he's one of the few recently that's that's done that in such a, mm -hmm. a short oh, yeah, I'm sure Matt Cole had less than a year's experience when the game was brand new. Well, when the game was only a year old? Yeah. 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 <laughs> So, uh, Thanks, Rob, church. <laughs> any final thoughts, Rob? Uh, no, I'm good. Okay. Let's <laughs> wrap well, it up before my Skype decides to kick It's cool. Uh, as a dad, as a dad uh, thing before we go, keep track of your shit. Don't lose stuff. Keep, stay hydrated. Dad, Take a shower. Bring, bring Personal snacks, hygiene is huge. Garbage food. Yeah, oh, don't absolutely. eat garbage food. Like an yeah. energy bar will and keep you awake. Yeah, yeah, tons of water. And drink a lot of water. Drink a lot of water. Yeah. You're gonna need. You're gonna need to stay hydrated because it's gonna be a long day. It's it's gonna, it's Vegas. It's gonna be warm. We probably will be in air conditioning, but take care of yourselves when we're out there. So, and with that, we'll end the episode. Thanks, guys, for coming on. Thank you, public, for voting on them and having fun. And I I pulled one fast over all you. I had them all on anyways. Didn't matter. <laughs> I think Dave came, Dave came in, Dave came Dave came in last and I had him on anyway. So Yeah, the two people that won the preliminaries aren't even here. Yeah. <laughs> but anywho, uh, again, Go thanks. Team. Thanks Go a lot, team. everyone. Uh, see you at Worlds. Have a good night, and we'll catch you later. Bye everyone. Thank you, British Spies. <laughs>